I probably need to preface my comments on Chief Lewis Barron's life by saying uh, there have been a number of generations since he was on the scene, and they probably don't know his name or who he was. But I can truthfully say that uh, of all the great leaders our Firefighters Association has had since its inception, probably no other individual has had the impact on what we do today as an association as Chief Lewis Barron's. Chief Barron's was born in 1860. His parents were German immigrants. And that was just prior to the Civil War. So as an infant and a toddler, he grew up during those bombardments here in Charleston and Fort Sumter and Fort Moultrie. Uh, the Civil War, of course, took its toll on so many people. But as a teenager, up around age 16, we're told that Chief Barron's was an apprentice cabinet maker. But he had a fascination with the fire service and he joined the hook and ladder company number two. He joined this department as a volunteer against his father's wishes. And probably the prejudice that his father had against the fire service was because his brother was killed as a volunteer firefighter fighting some of the fires during the Civil War in the city. We're told also that Chief Barron's was given a fire department uniform, a bright red uniform shirt, and he had to hide it from his parents because his father just dis disapproved of his being involved with the fire department. But again, uh, Chief Barron's loved the fire department, and when the fire department became a career or paid department in 1881, he joined Engine Company 1. And in short order, he was made foreman. He went through the ranks. As the chief, he oversaw the department's transition from paid volunteer to a fully paid fire department. And he also saw the transition of the fire apparatus from the horses and the steamers to a fully motorized fleet of, of uh, fire trucks. Uh, much like fire chiefs today, Chief Barron still had the same battles as with, uh, with budget and asking for equipment that fire, fire chiefs all over the country face. You know, you have continually asking and justifying what you need and then, then you know, as the money and the budget hold up, you will get, you get what you need. Um, he was a visionary in the fact that in 1915, they passed an ordinance in the city that, that all the buildings in the city would be inspected. And in January of 1916, he announced that the city of Charleston Fire Department would inspect every building within the city during that year. To accomplish this, he divided the city up into four wards and the inspections ensued throughout that year. Chief Lewis Barron's worked tirelessly to improve his own abilities to not only lead the Charleston Fire Department, but also the fire service in South Carolina. In 1905, Chief Barron's was confident that South Carolina could probably support and grow its own state association. So he called a meeting uh, in Columbia of some of his closest and most committed friends to meet and discuss and move forward with the idea of a South Carolina Firemen's Association. And it's interesting to note that Chief Barron's served from 1905 to 1932 as our association's first president. He was instrumental a visionary, a true visionary, in uh, setting the foundation for the Fireman's Insurance Fund. And that's what we know today as our 1% fund. Chief Barron's uh, was so active and passionate about improving the fire codes in South Carolina. And he was burdened in 1923 when the old Cleveland school near Camden burned and it, it killed 77 children and parents. Chief Barron's went around the state as he had for years in the past, pushing for the improvement of our state's fire codes. And uh, 
All of that was the foundation of our association today. It's interesting to note that Chief Barons died during Fire Prevention Week on October the 12th, 1932. 56 years of service. He was found in his bed as he had gone to sleep with his boots beside his bed. His trousers were tucked in his boots as if ready to respond to a call of fire. Well, when they discovered that he had died, word spread quick, quickly from firehouse to firehouse and orders were given to drape the bay doors with black material to recognize the mourning of the department. And we're told that as his body was removed from the station, the streets were lined with firefighters who had the opportunity and privilege to work under Chief Barron's and tears could be seen streaming from their eyes. You know, Chief Barron's would want us to learn some lessons from his life. And there are tons of lessons that Chief Barron's left for us. Um, I would say that his life embodied three elements of character. Character being one. He was dependable, he was humble, he was moral, he was honest. And then his life would reflect that he had content. He knew his stuff. And then thirdly, I would take out of his life that he was competent. He had the skills to deliver. And then there's another thing that I would glean from Chief Barron's life. I think he would show us, demonstrate to us through his life that people circle around compelling leaders with a solid vision and who can articulate that vision. I've also heard very recently that we should not model ourselves after people who are living today simply because we don't know how they will finish their race. Well, we know how Chief Barron's finished his race. And it pleases me to no end to acknowledge his contributions by our association presenting the Lifetime Achievement Award to the surviving members of Chief Barron's family and to the City of Charleston Fire Department.